Hello and welcome to Talking Bottom. This week's episode is Terror, the Halloween episode. I'm Paul Tanter. I'm Matt Brooks. And I'm Ange Johnson. This week it's the Halloween episode, the one that people probably remember best for the costumes that they wear. The picture that became, for some people, sort of the defining image of Bottom. Mm. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? It's the second most iconic look they have. They do change costumes in other episodes and stuff. The two most iconic images I think and them two on the bench and them two dressed in their Halloween yeah, costumes yeah for some reason it really does stick in the memory I suppose it's because it's so different yeah. yeah, so vivid the banana and the devil outfit that they're in it is just very I... memorable but it's not what I think of at all when I think yeah. of Richie and Eddie there's a variety of pictures of them on the bench with the Hammersmith sign behind them isn't mm. there but I think when the DVDs came out because some of the DVDs lent on Rick in a devil costume that, yes, that became a bit of an image for them and it. always the image that's depicted is him in the red tights yeah, isn't it? Mm. yeah. and he's Which, not in them long yeah and the green, the green ones just look wrong yeah. and the clear ones are pointless <laughs> really aren't they and yeah he's not in there mm. too long he shits all of them isn't he? so this, <laughs> this is a Halloween episode but it was first broadcast in January 1995 which mm. makes me wonder it gives me slight pause for thought I wonder if the series was supposed to go out slightly earlier in 94 I'd, maybe I'd agree it sounds like because the, the previous series were in the September weren't they I'll do the intro from iTunes it's not too long it's Halloween and after a visit by some trick or treaters Richie and Eddie decide to have their own Halloween party so they can meet girls. To get some money for the booze, they dress up as a devil and a banana and go trick-or-treating themselves armed with an electric cattle prod. That's the plot. Following last week's Ferris wheel episode, this is the first time as an audience that we've come back into the flat in the show for the best part of three years. They did series one and two, very strong, gone off another live show, now back in the flat, been remade by the art guys, trying yeah. to make it look and feel the same as before, but this one looks and feels slightly different, That's lighting something... feels a little bit yeah. slightly overlit. So That's something that people might not know, series one and two was done back to back, mm. but with the gap they had, all of the sets got dismantled and taken mm. away and well, material was destroyed and re- reused and whatever. So they had to completely rebuild the flat for series yeah. three, mm. which is why it looks a little bit different. Yeah. But why is it lit so brightly it's in this very series? Overlit, it's isn't odd. It? It's everything's brighter yeah. in this yeah. series. And you can tell it's a different director. Now, at this point, Series 3, Bob Spears, or Spires, is directing it. It's also produced by John Plowman. Yeah. yeah. Taken over as producer from Ed By, directing and producing. We're all here because Bottom is our favourite show, and I would say mm. even at its worst, it's still better than most TV. Mm. But this but is the worst episode. I won't, I won't give it... I wouldn't. I, won't, I don't know if it's the worst episode, but I won't give it undiluted praise. It's That's, my least favourite. Right. Like I think the opening couple of minutes of this episode is the point where either you realise your bottom is the older sort of social commentary of series one and two, living desperately sad lives. And Mm -hmm. when I say sad, I mean in both senses of the word, as in miserable and also as in, you know... Loser. Yeah. Or your bottom that you grew up with is massively over the top, double entendres and misunderstandings on an almost carry-on level. It's partially because they've done the live show in between. So they're playing it very much like it's there on stage for the live show, I I think, these performances I think so, yeah. I think it's slightly playing more to the live audience who are there and just hungry for the usual kind of hits. The opening couple of minutes of this puts me in mind slightly of, there's a bit in The Simpsons, in an episode of The Simpsons, where they talk about people just turning up and doing catchphrases and Mm -hmm. and everyone turns up, you know, Mr. Burns says X, and the bumblebee turns mm-hmm. up and says, mm-hmm. I caramba, and all those kind of things. And it feels like they're almost kind of going through the greatest hits in the, in the opening Absolutely. of this. Absolutely, especially yeah. the double entendre says three back to back, and then I think there's even five because yeah. then it's uh, mm. Grandma Sausage, the doors getting a good knock in. There's and, several double entendres, yeah. sausage. And even spot the balls. Spot the balls, misunderstanding about balls. Yeah, yeah, it's good, but. It's Eddie sighing and talking to camera. Richie doing his sort of stuff. Mm. Burnt food. That's oh, that's worked before. Um, you know, flakes, knockers, think, sausages. Yeah. You can call it a callback, or you can say they're rehashing material. But I yeah. think there are quite a few callbacks in this episode. Normally, it's not a show that references our other episodes and stuff, but there yeah. are I th- there are a few direct that, references. That's exactly it. The entire episode feels almost like a callback to Holy in yeah. that they're redoing the idea of sort of like a very fantastical idea they're going to raise the devil yeah, which yeah. is obviously the opposite to Richie believing that the son of God mm. is has arrived on the doorstep but it's that similar mm. hook Even- and it, you don't quite go with it in this episode at all because I don't believe that any of them really believe it's going to happen, unlike in Holy. The very first thing you see Richie in is his apron. We've mm. opened a previous episode in when he's waiting Eddie for Eddie to come yeah. home. Before. I think this is a different apron, though. It's similar, but mm. it seems more thrilly, frilly yeah. um, and girly and stuff. I do like it's quite a throwaway yeah. joke of him having a pan of fire. Yeah, 
there. Yeah, so and the, the fire the, extinguisher yeah, right on hand. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that their sort of callbacks did put me in mind of was actually the first episode of Blackadder Goes Forth. Because I remember watching that. I don't know if it was when I first watched it as a kid, because I was, would have been nine at the time. And the opening joke is, what are you doing? I'm scratching my name onto a bullet. Why? It's a cunning plan. And I remember thinking, oh, you've opened with the catchphrase. You've opened with that already. Do you not have any other material? Now, in that case... You thought that at nine years old. You see, what now, a precocious little well, shit. Now, that's <laughs> why I don't know if I remembered it at nine. But I remember thinking that <laughs> yeah. during that episode. Yes. So, but and now, Black Adder Goes Forth... I thought that, but it carries on, and it's a great series, one of the mm. best of Black Adders. In this episode, we had the great one last week that we that we agreed that kind of almost feels like it's divorced from this series, mm. and then they open with these classic best hits of Bottom, and you think, oh, please don't just be doing the old stuff, and please have other stuff that you yeah, can be doing. I know some yeah. of the, some of the double entendres they have in other episodes are quite natural and just uh, you know just come up and then they make the joke. You sort of, as soon as it's said though, you think, oh, here's it coming, here it's mm. coming, but. Things like, how's your sausage is yeah. not how you'd phrase the question. That's mm. so yeah. forced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know? we should eat our flakes. Flake, no one calls yeah. cornflakes flakes. No one yeah. has I ever think, said that. I think what's he forced... mean, dandruff? Though, what would the misunderstanding be? Well, I, I've i always thought it's knob cheese or right, right. flakes from said yeah, smeg- knob. Smegma, dry yeah. smegma. Yeah. Like, whether it's dry skin or not, not yeah. of knob. Yeah. Is is also something I, I would so. accept. But you know, all of this isn't to say they don't play it brilliantly. I mean, like there is a lot of great. They're straight back in there with their characters. Rick playing Richie with his sort of yes, yes, yeah. You know, just mm, doing his Richie. Yeah, it's, stuff, it's not really. It's not out of character. It's just that they've kind of found the what works with their character, and they're not. Tr- being as risky with it, I think. They're almost too comfortable with it, maybe. Yeah, mm. almost, yeah. almost. After having been on tour with it and playing up to live... Audio, and oh, you could, they could probably feel the love in the room for the characters in a yeah. way that they wouldn't yeah. have had in the first series. So it's, it's a completely different animal that yeah. they're actually producing at this point, yeah. quite and literally. Of course, of course, it's a different director as well. You can't mm. emphasize yeah. that enough. But they are the creators of it, but mm-hmm. they, yeah, they yeah. still have a director there who's telling them what to do and stuff and it's up to them yeah. if they decide to mm. follow his notes or not but I would say forced is definitely the word yeah. I feel for a lot of the gags yeah. and Does... I hate saying it because I still <laughs> enjoy the third yeah. series of Bottom and this episode has its highlights of course yeah we will say now as a disclaimer we're very aware that for a lot of people mm. this episode and a couple of other episodes in series three are the favourite ones mm. of theirs in all of Bottom and we totally respect that yeah I mean um, the amount of people every Halloween that dress up yeah. as I've these seen characters, characters yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, isn't yeah. It? yeah, and that's great fun because, of course, you know, just going as Richie and Eddie in their ordinary suits wouldn't be yeah. fun, would it? Yeah. So, in that way, it is a great episode because it is so memorable. It's yeah. a nice detail the the costume design, as naff as the idea of that the banana is, I think. Mm. Uh, but I like that they are wearing their normal clothes underneath it. They yeah. yeah. Think to, Change that, you know, like Richie took his trousers yeah, off, yeah. still keeps the shirt and tie. It's yeah. only done he's got, isn't it? That's... I also like that their costumes are two radically different things. They didn't go for the thing of we're going to be a pair of somethings, yeah, you know? They don't actually mention it, do they? But do you think it's that? Eddie's just turned up and they didn't have anything else left. Yeah, is that what happened? Is that they what they do they say? They didn't, oh, have, right, any, they didn't yeah. have any pumpkins left. No, yeah. oh, right. So, but Rix doesn't look like he's gone to a proper shop to get well, it, does I guess it? he's... He could have <laughs> had the, head, the headset made because he's got a weird floppy sort mm. of horn thing. And the top, well, he, went, he does say... I should have bought more tights mm. and stuff. So they yeah. went out and stuff. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. it being called Terror reminds me of uh, the episode Nasty, uh, Young Ones. It's mm. another Halloween theme episode. The Halloween themed episode of Young Ones, though, starts with a scary opening. It starts in a graveyard. This starts half eight in the morning, bright sunny day, yeah, yeah. Making, making a sausage. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nothing even remotely Halloween-y about yeah. it, right? It- in an opening, which I was trying to think of any other opening that has started without them being either in a mood with each other or at least ambivalent to each other. This one has them happy and smiling. Happy. I don't know why, but I thought the spot the ball competition was a gag from one of the live shows. I thought I found I it was agree. odd to see it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've mixed that up in my memory as well. well. Th- there's one or two things in this which... If you've seen the live show before this, you go, oh, they use that in the live show. Mm. Like, what time is this? What place of man? Mm. <laughs> I think it's a, a very funny throwaway joke that Terry Venables <laughs> plays the um, 
but the ball competition <laughs> wins it every week and lives in Wembley Stadium. His oh. address is Wembley Stadium. <laughs> He's been kicked out of home, he's just moving to work. Yeah. But it's a rarity, usually, in Bottom for them to have something so topical. If people came to the show now, they'd have to look up and see who Terry Venables was. There's a couple of uh, topical things in this. Uh, Jif Microliquid. Mm. Yeah, advert of the time. Yes. And, and well, Chris Barry should be a yeah. voice of that yeah. advert. Oh, and, did it? Was yeah. that Chris yeah. Barry? It also shows Richie off as the housewife as well, doesn't it? So yeah. He's yeah. at home watching adverts because there's Jif Microliquid. And, and also he does the Asda. Yeah, the Asda tap. That's where yeah. that's from, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. But also, there's a reference to Maria Whitaker which even by 1995 I don't think she was that famous yes, anymore right. so who is Maria Whitaker? she was a page three girl like okay. sort of, it was like her and Sam Fox were like the two big Fine. ones in the yeah. 80s two big ones two big hey. ones <laughs> now is that a choice you think because of the sound of her voice there's a good rhythm to Maria Whitaker. it's an interesting sounding mm. name I maybe think. yeah that's why they picked her other than Sam Fox you yeah know, not, maybe that's just not as much poetry Maria Whitaker's bra has a certain <laughs> nice sort of flow to it doesn't it yeah yes. and even if you don't know who she is you're just yeah. assuming that it's some bird with big tits yeah. Richie says he spent 25 quid in poster walls on the spot the ball competition was a postal order an old reference even back then is that the gag um, that he's you know he's a very old fashioned I, I, I'm not sure though but they still exist what so, is a postal order exactly so for, instead of a check yeah if so, you don't have checks so you go to the post account. office and give them the money and they yeah. send it over essentially. Basically, yeah. you buy a certain amount of postal orders from the, from the post office. Mm. They take the money. You've got the, your piece of paper is worth that amount of money. Sort of mm. Kind of thing, yeah. Okay. So I think it's used generally by people who don't have bank accounts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it is more old fashioned because most people do have that now. But you can yeah. still you can still get postal orders. Yeah. But that would be very much used by Rich and Eddie on the fringes of society, not mm. able to get any kind of credit card yeah, or anything like that. They've you know. got no jobs. They wouldn't yeah. have any sort yeah. of but credentials. They, have <laughs> they wouldn't have a, a... Would they have had that score back then? The sort of credit rating I don't score? Know. You'd have it. I don't know if it'd be computerised. Like, well, Eddie had Eddie. savings, didn't he? He had yeah. too many savings, therefore he would have a bank account. Yeah. Why it, has he got the DTs? That's what, is, what, what does DT mean? I don't know what that so means. So I'm pretty oh. sure it's hallucinations when you're coming out D- of it, like well. alcoholic... You know, it's like cold turkey. So That's what he says, I, Eddie. You've been, it's just a drink. You've got the DT. Is it I, delirium? I, I believe it's delirium tremors. Right. Okay, yeah. that'll be. It's yeah. the shakes you get when you're sort of mm. alcohol is a drug, and you're mm. sort of sure. reacting to the lack of alcohol. Yeah. Sure. So why is Eddie coming off? That's what I think, well, at the big top of the episode. He's been drinking because it's the, because it's the morning. Yeah. You know, uh, alcoholics yeah, wake up sweating and needing a drink in the morning. It's established that it's only half past eight in the morning. Why the fuck are they trick or treating at half eight in the morning? <laughs> that's because they're, because they're enterprising. That's why yeah. before school. That's yeah. what the kids down there do. Okay, so the BBC is an institution famous worldwide. It's how got some of the best people involved in all levels, uh, creatively in the writing, in in directing. You know, it's it's the envy of the world mm. in yep. a lot of places. Why did they cast the three worst child yeah. actors in the fucking world to play How those devils? How dare you have yeah. a go at Gus from EastEnders? <laughs> Absolutely appalling. Well, actually, the uh, the the black kid yeah. is the by far the best yeah. one. He, yeah, he, he's, he went he's on average. to be Gus in EastEnders. Like, I see. There but, you are. But right, it's amazing how when they're at the door, they're vaguely passable. Gus from EastEnders does the mm. best line with "Too Late Weirdo" yeah. with the delivery. But then later on, when they're in the street. It's like they've regressed and they just don't know how to act at all. I know they're kids, but as you say, Matt, like the BBC has casting directors. They have access to actual child actors. Why the fuck could they not have got three kids who could act? Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Savile was uh, availing himself of this at the time. Um, I like the little line of uh, giving sweets to kids and get arrested. Always topical, no matter when. Yeah, Yeah, looking for the camera and everything from Eddie. Yeah. I don't know what happened. You know, it's the sort of thing they turn up on the day, they're not as good. Something We yeah. don't know what's happened. They're minor parts, yeah. a small amount of lines, but it fucking stands out. It's so yeah. memorable. Trick or treat, you bald headed mm. bastard. It, I remember that's kind of a, a catchphrase yeah. I remember. Mm. Not a catchphrase, I only said once, but <laughs> and yeah, it, you know, I can hear it word for the, for the tone of it, how it's yeah. misdelivered to this day. It's awful cringe every single time I've seen it but there's something odd about the fact that Eddie's scared of them as well yeah yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I wouldn't think they're any hallucination way. I, suppose. I suppose but then when they're beaten up by them later on yeah. it's just none That's of it sits character. right with me yeah. now, but I will say that it leads to one of the best bits I think of physical comedy that we've seen in Bottom which is Eddie coming back in with a trident sticking out and then the comedy swinging of it but then the final thwack on yeah. Richie as he passes so, yeah. out so that is a lot of fun that bit it's always, it's yeah. always Laurel and Hardy it's, or any of those but it's of, a great yeah. prop as well so yeah. it's, it's right in there as well why mm. would a logistically why would a plastic kids 
uh, prop be able to pierce the skin the, of a... The kid wasn't plastic. It was wooden. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. I suppose the, the insinuation is it, it's a real trident, right? I guess so. Maybe like nicked it from his parents' uh, gardening shed, like a trowel or something. No, what were they? A pitchfork. A pitchfork hmm. or something, maybe. Now, so I got a little bit confused while, as a kid. Richie makes him a drink because he's hallucinating. Mm. What he's actually doing is making him so, kind of like a wake-up juice cocktail thing like in Back to the Future... Yeah, uh, sort yeah, of yeah. something Raw to shock eggs. the system. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's seven eggs and all this stuff like bleach. And when I was little, I thought it was like it was yeah. in the last episode that he puts Drambui and Mr. Sheen full on substance yeah. abuse stuff. He's, he's drunk bleach before. We've seen mm. that. Why would he need to snort it? Is that just that would be more of a shock to his system, or is that something like is, is, is is snorting up the nose or not at all a phrase no. that no, I've no. missed? I've not abused enough substances. No, no, no. Or, no? well, it's, it's not like well, a common. So taking phrase. some taking some drugs nasally mm. uh, enables it to hit your body, yes, hit your brain faster, like bugs. cocaine and yeah. that kind of thing. But yeah. there's people that snort vodka, things yeah. like that. Which is, which, which, isn't that going to make you choke? Because you, you can't inhale I, it when you snort for your nose. Have you guys ever tried that? I've never tried no. that. No. no, no never. Snorting vodka? No. Cocaine? I will pass on commentary. <laughs> no. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll never pass on the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Have yeah, yeah. Or is it some sort of kind of bravado, tough thing? You know, I think like it's, I, I think it's to make it a fast delivery system to get it right to what passes for Eddie's brain. It's uh, it's obviously a little tube that's through his sleeve, but you can't see it. It's, yeah. it's, it's mm-hmm. well done. I will say this episode does have a few well done props I mean like the slitting of the wrist with the blood mm. and the farting later on like the pirate well, stuff they do yeah. see, uh, you can see the box and you the can, thing. You, I can think see, you can see the cables but I do like the fact that they've gone that far with it yeah I'm willing to have a pipe with gas well, strapped to my, there's strapped one to my body bit, um, the, just before he goes to answer the door I think mm. he says fire to his dressing gown <laughs> so, yeah. so it cuts pretty quick but it's like right. flying up his back it's right. very reminiscent of the Dangerous Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, of the, to his all of the pyro yeah. stuff that they've done. Then, of course, there is another in, in Doe. Obviously, his pants go on fire. So they've obviously decided to sort of go to full mayhem <laughs> in Series 3. You're right. Doe, he gets his crotch set on fire. Mm. And then when they're trying to do hilarious family video accidents, mm. Eddie gets set on fire, mm. doesn't he? So yeah. they go to the fire thing quite a lot in this is series. Is it the same uh, special effects guy as Series 2? It's Peter, Peter Rag, Rag, yeah. It is. I just wonder whether they've wanted to go back to it. Because it is chaotic... Yeah, this series yeah. does feel more chaotic. More cartoonish as yeah. well. It's like a Definitely living cartoon. Like this one is a very cartoony episode. The I'd violence say. certainly is. This isn't very violent, this episode, this, is it? This one, well, definitely trident not. Trident to the bollocks and the, all the punch-ups behind the... Bit. You know, it's yeah, not a lot physically don't, very don't, nasty. Don't, don't get me started on the punch-up behind the fucking well, wall. Right? We'll, get, we'll, right. we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. come to yeah, that, but, I know. But, but in terms of violence between Richie and Eddie, there's only one, that's a kick in the bollocks, to get mm. Eddie to open his mouth to take the sprouts. Yeah, all right, fair play. Once Eddie snorts his drink and passes out, which... Clips Richie again with with the trident, knocking him out. So in the passage of time, they've both been unconscious. Then it's like it's almost like we've missed a big chunk of the episode because during that time, Richie and Eddie have presumably spoke about the fact that what Eddie had seen at the door right. wasn't a hallucination. It's Halloween. Then we should go and get costumes. Let's yeah. go down the shops, buy them separately because I don't see you buy a banana costume. And it gets back, and it's still daylight. It's still very early. It's just something that that's odd to yeah, me. It seems yeah. quite a messy which, transition, which feels like in the writing they had. Okay, we've got a series of incidents. We don't really have a way to link them as smoothly as we have previously. Mm. So again, series three is where they would often just go. Scene ends. Musical sting. Fade into the next scene. I've never understood why the Eddie in the banana costume gets a literal round of applause. There's no the other meaning to it. It's just a face value. Right. I'm wearing a banana costume. We've run out of ideas. That, wearing... that makes it feel like suddenly we're in an American sitcom where people yeah. just get a round of applause for walking in. Yeah. I, the, the, the costumes have always kind of bothered me. When a show resorts to we're going to dress our people up in funny costumes, it feels like that's when they've reached the shark jumping point. In order to get lost, we'll just dress them up in funny clothes and that'll get a laugh. And that is summed up by Eddie getting a round of applause as he walks in. That's what's really frustrating about it isn't it because you know that they're better than that yeah yeah and I, we probably all sound like complete nut or assholes and there will be lots of people who love the terror yeah. episode and but, love seeing the costume and love yeah. like you know that but i i just think that it wasn't 
yeah. unnecessary. <laughs> For all me hating his banana mm. costume, I love his pumpkiny noises. Yeah. <laughs> do you love the exploding carrots? And I, all I, I actually well? really do. I, like, I find them all right. I like the fact they explode. I also like the fact that it does it in the same shot. So you it's, see Rick light mm, it, walk absolutely. away, and bang. It's a real yeah. exploding, exploding prop. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, a uh, little stick of mini dynamite coated in carrot or something, uh, I, I it's, guess. It's probably just a firework. Well, yeah, it's but it looks like a carrot. Like a I mean, you know oh, right. I mean? oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like b- built a carrot body around it yeah. or something. Does it's... it seem like Aid is trying not to laugh when he's going, ooh, headbutt? Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit. I do, I do like the idea that Eddie would obviously go from that to exploding carrots and then there's obviously the sprouts Mexicane mm. which I haven't That's, touched on yet yeah. and all of those things and, and obviously it, it's like they've gone through Halloween and we're like oh it's usually pumpkins mm-hmm. and whatever and apparently yeah. it, it did used to be turnips and things way back oh, when yeah. Yeah. Really? People would eat vegetables on Halloween so I'm sure they've done a lot of, kind of Halloween right. research sure. and things There and needs to all... be more meat based holidays really so it's a very popular holiday in Hammersmith, isn't it? Because there's no pumpkins left at all, and no pumpkin <laughs> costumes left at all. Yeah. Oh, we we have a run on those this yeah, time of year. Early in the morning as well. Yeah. It's not even like oh, we're just, we're just about to close. Sorry, we've got the whole day still. Yeah, I mean, you've got see no cat, more you apples and razor blades in the yeah. every day. Don't you? Right, the cattle prod. The homemade nature of mm. it, the look of it, it reminds me of something like Doc Brown. Yeah. 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 Stuff. yeah. It's, the it's first really reveal good. of that yeah. is great. Where's but, the cattle prod? Oh, it's that massive thing behind. Yeah. The sun. Like, the shot of Richie wielding it towards mm. camera makes it look about fucking eight feet long, doesn't it? <laughs> it does look pretty threatening. Yeah, kind of. It doesn't even use it as a joke, but it's sort of a phallic image as well. He's had it pain <laughs> behind between his legs and stuff. Obviously, mm. uh, we need to convey some electricity, so let's use the standard mm. electricity visual effect. Yeah, that we've been using since 1991, <laughs> but the BBC has been using since Doctor Who in 1977. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the sound effect of the follow-through of him shitting himself, the, mm. the proper dribbly squelchiness yeah. of it, it's uh, the exact same sound three times. It's a good one. It is. It it, it's the sort of sound of a cow shitting on, like a, on a farmyard floor, isn't it? Yeah, I, I enjoy the first time it happens. Right, and then I just find the you constant know, kind of call back to the cattle prod, and you just know exactly what's going to happen. I don't. It's just I'm it's not, never on, made me laugh. On That's, the face value of it, I know what you mean, but mm. it's because it's signal. I sometimes find signalling a joke yeah. really funny. Yeah. And just because it's so obvious and you're literally waiting for it to happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it is the same joke three times. That's the problem with it yeah. for me. The first time, it is very funny. Mm. And then when it happens again, you're like, okay. And then it happens yeah, again yeah. and you're like, okay, so how much more material are you getting out of this? Quite literally you know, with the tights. My problem with the second time is that when he says, give it to me, it's mm, it's signalled so what's going to happen, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely. But, like, that's, that's... but the audience is way ahead of it yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's pantomime. Yeah. yeah. And when yeah. Spud Gun opens the door. Yeah. Okay, well, we're it, in. A, we cut. First of all, we cut to the outside indoor mm, set. Yeah. Very clearly. It's an interesting set. set. Why did they design a whole outdoor set for like <laughs> yeah. one minute of uh, screen time? Well, I'm going to assume they had it somewhere in the BBC, you or know, the warehouse. Bill, the bill or something. That's RTV. I, that's RTV. I, I will say, I quite like that set. I think it mm. looks all right. Considering that things could be a bit ropey sometimes, that one, yeah. one was a good well, one. Well, I don't. I think it's not as good as Wimbledon Common, which I know you didn't like. Mm. Oh, right. Okay. I think yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so obviously a set. And just, I guess if they didn't build it from scratch, fair enough. They encounter the kids again. In case we didn't emphasise it enough before, they're shit actors. Mm. Awful. This uh, scene, they're terrible in it. Yeah, banter between the three of them. And then it's like, oh, time for, some, for a revenge, yeah. isn't it? Even though, well, Richie kind of was like, oh, let's get revenge, even though he wasn't done over with them the first mm. time, is it? Yeah. So it's weird that he kind of has the plan first of all, because yeah. right? Eddie's scared of them still, mm. isn't he? Which... You say that he's out of character for Eddie to be scared this of fighting. This is what's odd, because I do feel that maybe it's ah. that we've missed something where he's actually, he is going cold turkey from booze. Well, Eddie would be scared this time because he got hurt by them before. So he would react in a way of like, if you just, hit a dog, then sure, it flinches. Just think he he's, would he would batter them, Eddie. Like, he's you know, been usual hurt Eddie. by ah. Richie sometimes. He's well, not scared of a fight with him, is he? So I think this is partly symptomatic of, by this point, series three, the two characters are much more similar to each other than they have been before. Mm. So Richie in the first series and Eddie in the first series are very different characters. By the third series, they're slightly interchangeable. Mm. In fact, later on, when Spike and a Hedgehog turn up, you've got four people who are all apparently virgins, mm. all scared of, you know, like they all have the same reactions. Yeah, which bit. is odd, isn't it? Yeah, like even Spud Gun and Hedgehog seem quite more different to each other in mm. the first series and second series. And in this one, when they turn up, again, you could probably take each of their lines and give them to the other one. Mm. And it would work probably. either way. I found it very weird to have Spud Gun on his own 
for a scene. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not ever happened before or yes. since. I but mean, like, he edited some scenes with his mum. I mean, Dave's still... Actually, like, within you think Eddie distance. must know where he lives? That's the point. I always assume that they live together, or if not... They uh, don't um, live together, uh, definitely, because right. he's married with kids, isn't he? Well, in that case, Hedgehog would presumably always be around Spudgun's place, but you're paying Christopher Ryan for the episode anyway. Mm. He's going to be in the later scenes. Why don't you put him in the scenes with... Spug gun at Spug okay, gun's so house. So you have the payoff joke of invite mm. your friends. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. The idea that Richie and Eddie are going out mugging yeah. on Halloween, I yeah. do like. Yeah. That concept is great. That, was, that they would decide to choose nice, Halloween yeah. to go out and try and make some money. That is so very rich. They loosened up the old woman with a cricket bat. That's a scene I'd yeah. like to have seen. Very yeah. much so. That seems quite. Uh, Which is why it doesn't make any sense that yeah. they're then scared of these three devil boys. Yes. In the ranking of all the money making schemes that they've attempted in their lives, mm. this one is one of the more normal ones that people in society try, but it's very much a Richie and Eddie thing, isn't yeah. it? Calling around people's houses, essentially legalised mugging. Begging. Begging yeah. and mugging. Yeah. My, yeah. my mum always used to say, like, you're not going out begging. Right. <laughs> like, I wasn't allowed to go trick or treating. <laughs> yeah, Richie points out where they are. It's like, oh, uh, Chief Maputo Chief. Bethulzi Can you... K- G- Cul-de-sac. Can I? Can go I? Go on. Yeah. Chief Munga Suta Buta Lazy Cul-de-sac. Okay, mm. sure. This is a... well, brilliant. They're loaded out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why is Spud Gun live there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, if if this is the loaded part of Hammersmith, yeah. then fucking hell, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the poor part <laughs> must be like Beirut. So, uh, what do is... you know who he is, or is this a quiz question? Oh hmm. well, yeah, he's um, like an African uh, tribal leader or something. Isn't South he? African, I yeah. think. He's yeah. a is that a reference Parliament? to Nelson yeah. Mandela House? He was one of <laughs> he was one of those names that you'd hear on the news in the eighties occasionally. You mm. know? Okay, and I think we'll have a word from our sponsors. Did you guys notice that when they go behind the wall to fight the kids? Yeah. Well, first of all, I quite like Richie's sort of Popeye windmill attack. Yeah, yeah. That he goes in like for a, <laughs> for a fight. Um, I'm actually. It tickles me the axe coming up and. Yeah, okay. Down. I know it's it's naff, but it does tickle you. Yeah. The axe, I like the just waving of a cardboard cutout of someone. Sure. That, Who is that? That really irks me. Who is the cardboard cutout? I'm not sure know. actually. I don't know. I was trying to find out on that, and I can't. And I can't, I paused it. Can't figure out who the hell right. it is. It's a woman. Yeah. Mm. So something, something I never noticed until uh, watching it this time. One of the posters on the wall um, that they're behind is of Maximum Carnage, which was a 90s Spider-Man um, event thing where, uh, like, Carnage, the uh, the symbiote villain thing, like, takes over yeah. New York and going mental and stuff. There's also a video game. Which I think that's probably a poster for the video game right, okay. at the time. Which is the second uh, Spider-Man reference. Re- oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, just I found that very odd that that was I, there. I saw that poster. I Honestly, I just assumed there was a group or a band called Maximum Carnage yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Carnage is uh, the second symbiote you know Venom's more popular right okay yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean it's a very very 90s I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I know about Venom I don't know about yeah okay yeah. But, but I guess that's I don't think that would have been a Rick Mount Adrian Emerson edition that's our department I isn't think it? so yeah, yeah. yeah Did, I mean, so it's also signed Arsenal the, on the, oh, really? On the, yeah. the, there is a great addition that the art department have put on this set, which is on the wall outside Spun Gun's house. Did you guys notice the desiccated skeleton of what I assume was a cat or a rat <laughs> oh, or a no, dog? No. <laughs> if you have a look, there's a. It's just propped up on the wall, yeah. and then Richie nearly knocks it, or Eddie nearly knocks it as they walk off after Brilliant. they leave. But it's like it's like a little skeleton, like it's just sat there and then died, and then just gradually its flesh has just rotted what away. Is it a wumble? It could be a womble, yeah. (laughs) Now, do you think what the scene was actually meant to be was those kids were meant to walk past and uh, said, oh, we'd be doing really well with trick-or-treating and it was meant to make Richie and Eddie jealous, but Rick Mao took it upon himself, like, these little actors are fucking awful. (laughs) Let's beat them up. Yeah, maybe, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they they fluffed the line, but it is funny that it's like we got 20 pence off that off the girl incontin- with the continent girl off the incontinent yeah. girl yeah. yeah speak the line properly you little <laughs> okay. cunt right do that again and this yeah. time don't be shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go right come on you're not going to see your mum again otherwise <laughs> I, I like Richie bragging did you see me hitting the really little one mm. doesn't even say did you hit, see me hit the biggest one <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the little one just bragging about that and then like I'll tell you later mm. when you're drunk two things are possible here either 
Eddie forgot where Spud Gun lives or yeah. doesn't has never visited him before because he's genuinely surprised to see Spud Gun. Mm. Oh, you know, maybe Spud Gun strikes me as the kind of guy who's always doing like housing benefit scams or something. I wonder if he's like <laughs> if he lives at quite a few places so he can claim a load of money or something. Uh, it's something uh, that you you might know of this, Ange. You wouldn't put it. So people belong here. Right. Now, uh, a spud gun has got a miss parting thing where, like, where you don't part your hair quite in the middle and you just get mm. something from the wrong side of your hair right. over to the other side, you know. I, I, I used you know to have I mean? longish hair. I used yeah. to, I know what you and mean, And there's yeah. a bit where it's like a bit of extra fringe. It just, yeah. it looks so scruffy and horrible. So it's mm. a great bit of, uh, of makeup design for the character. So it's only this episode yeah. that has it. Greasy spud gun. Yes. Mm. I love the reluctant Hello Richie that he gets in. <laughs> That's yes. so telling. How, but but which Richie sort of um, mirrors just, back, doesn't he? You just, know, whatever. Like, yeah. so, so by this point, so when Richie has previously encountered Dave Hedgehog and Spud Gun, mm-hmm. he's been desperate to make friends with yes. them and be part of the group. By now, and we see this when Spud Gun answers the door, and then later on when it, mm-hmm. Richie opens the yeah. door, and it's just those two. It's he a can't fucking hatred. stand them, yeah. can he? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think it's just that he spent three years trying to make friends with them, and eventually they're now an annoyance? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. They just take Eddie's time away from him. Yes. Mm. Yeah. They're an obstacle for, to his affections of, of Eddie. And they don't like him, so yeah. he can't kiss up to them <laughs> like he's, he's failed. So does Spud Gun live with his mum, do we think? And is I she, is is she upstairs yeah. servicing some gentlemen at the moment? Very possibly, is well, the look, brothel. Spud Gun clearly has a very sheltered life because he doesn't have any idea what trick-or-treat means. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Even he understands. What does that mean? Like, what? Where the fuck have you been living? <laughs> He might just be drunk. I don't know. Well, he's uh, yeah, he's got a Jonesy for drugs as well here. Isn't he? Which, that yeah. seemed odd to me. He's as a kid, like, yeah, drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. They never do drugs in the show ever. Yeah. They say, oh, you want drugs? Is yeah. it's always an insult. It never means you're, you're fun. For uh, you know, the the cattle prod stuff happens here and then, uh, mm. right here twice. In between shits two and three, <laughs> we cut to Eddie smoking a cigarette, mm. which I think is the only time we ever see him smoking. But it's established that they do smoke because there's cigarettes mm. or like scattered about the, the flat. And we well, it's Spud Gun's given him one, isn't it? They're right, both. Yeah. I guess so. They? Yeah, makes it. Like, why does he hide? Like, oh, they're coming. Like, first of all, it's funny that they smell him coming. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, oh, quick, put out your fag and hide the bit. I guess yeah. that might be because they only want one. But hide the fag seems to be a motif for them, doesn't it? Richie to Eddie, yes. quick, hide the fags. You know, it's Hello, the childish, yeah, yeah, childish yeah. thing of like, oh, shouldn't really be doing yeah. this, so hide. Yeah. It's, it's when you're 14 and it's now, oh fuck, yeah. Right now, here's something when um, Bug Gun's pondering what's happened. And it's like, well, shitting yourself in front of people. <laughs> and Eddie says, well, maybe it's just a deep subconscious desire to amuse. Do you think that is him commenting on their entire career? <laughs> yeah, that's They're yeah. shitting yeah, themselves in front of people. We've been debasing ourselves yes. on stage for years. Yes. For your amusement, you fuckers. I love the line, you great vat of dripping. <laughs> that it is, is a good. good line for Spud Gun, isn't yes. it? It really does describe what he, <laughs> what he is. But again, I don't use it. Um, I if you're talking about quotes from episodes that I yeah. generally yeah. don't yeah. but you think sense. that this is the first house they've gone to in a way even though no, they've beaten they up the old lady yeah. or whatever, because they did have money Richie's before. not shut his tights before now sure yeah. But actually, Eddie's been holding it, hasn't he? So maybe this is Fair the enough. last time. They Richie's could have just been, been threatening them, or mm. just like you know, showing someone you, that you've got a gun in yeah, your holster. To be fair, it's probably only Spud Gun that would would in any way stand up to them. Everyone yeah. else would be like, "Oh God, it's the loonies! Just yeah. give them twenty p." Because they haven't made much money, have they? <laughs> Who would win out of those two and Mister Rottweiler if they had the? What do you mean, right. Spud Gun? No, no, no. So Richie and Eddie turn up trick or treating at, at Rottweiler's door with the cattle prod. What happens? Oh well, Richie tries to cattle prod him, shits himself, and then gets <laughs> and then gets the rest beaten of the up, shit kicked out right. of him by. While, while while Eddie sneaks past into his kitchen and starts just, helping himself just, to his boiled yeah, eggs and chicken. Yeah, maybe he would have loads of bad. sweets in actually, ready, ready yeah, <laughs> to yeah. scoff. I bet Mr. Rottweiler would be an absolute sweetheart when genuine kids turn up at his door. Maybe, because he does <laughs> show his nice side with the, uh, his girlfriend, doesn't he? Mm, so he yeah. has a sweet nature in him, and he does look like a seaside postcard <laughs> <Yeah>. type. <laughs> the string yeah, it's so a he shame they didn't bring have, him back. He doesn't have the hanky on his, on his head, does he? Do the exploding mm. carrots put you in mind of the young ones? Things exploding mm. on set, it just it had me thinking back to the young yeah. ones, you know? I suppose yeah. so. Also beca- also and the because... drawing a face on a carrot, yeah. you know, that yeah. the puppetry that you get in the young ones is... Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, reminiscent so of the that, the carrot dancing with a chip in Boring, but isn't there? Also... I can't say I know the episode, but yeah, I know which bit you mean. I know yeah. the bit you mean. But also the, the oven exploding, indicating the food is ready. Again, <laughs> now, that, now that made me think about the time Rick Melnick died yeah. by setting fire to the gas. 
Right. Which and is then, amazing when you think that they still went on to do loads more very yeah. dangerous special more, effects. More yeah. explosions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Live right in front of me. And so what we'll do for the rest of this episode is we'll strap gas pipes to our bodies and then yeah. have them set on fire. <laughs> yeah. Next to flammable, well, it's really not actually flammable, yeah. uh, red wine yeah. in a bathtub I mean, sort of thing. Why is it red? It's, uh, they don't know what it is. It's just... Is it meant to be gin? Bathtub gin, maybe. I think it just... But it's just anything. Some, being bleach and God bring, knows what else. Why would you bring a bathtub into the living room? <laughs> so you've unplumbed that, dragged it over. Oh, do you, There's no benefit at all do you think that. That's you do the, it in the bathroom. Do you think that's their bathtub? Or have they left, they've left their bathtub where it is they've and they've found, stolen someone else's? Oh, or they, fa- they found it in the street. You never oh, properly I, I see think, the bathroom really in proper uh, mm. detail other than the first episode you kind of like you see glimpses of it here and there yeah. Yeah. judging by the dirt on it it's meant to be theirs yes I think I believe so this series yeah. everything is grimy to the nth degree mm. like a little bit too much yes like, it is isn't it I think it's like well, it's because what what do we need to look or we need to look dirty okay yeah. mm. we, but, they're doing an impression of their set because everything is grimy and nothing is clean, it's a bit like underlining every single thing on a shopping list for effect. You mm, lose you the mean effect. Highlighting of it. a whole book. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, oh, we've made it. If you don't have any patches of, of cleanliness, then the grime yeah. doesn't feel as grimy. Yeah. There's, a, there's a shelf that's wonky in the background that I noticed, so I thought was quite a good touch. I guess it's, it's sort of falling over or something. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where the cocktail shaker is. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. the, the clock on the wall and everything, that's never been in that position before, has it? Don't think so. And the, that clock gag. Yeah. I mean, it quite literally falls flat for oh, me. Oh, yeah? I find oh, it really? funny. Oh, really? Okay. Twice? Find, you no, find I that find funny? funny? Also, because well, the build-up that doesn't go anywhere. Do you notice that the picture of Elvis is a different picture yes, of Elvis? Yes. So it's like they've gone, oh, what, uh, what's on the itinerary for this place? Oh, there's a picture of Elvis. Oh, we can't find it. Just print out a new I one. I actually really like the idea that Eddie or Richie, probably Richie, occasionally changes the picture of Elvis that they <laughs> right. have. Eddie doesn't notice. <laughs> right, okay. Don't you think? Like, I think it's the same <laughs> painting by the window, though, isn't it? That weird <laughs> oh, yeah. greeny mm. sort of colour that had the emergency fiver in yeah, the live yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, very Fades. very famous picture. Though. Oh, is it? Okay. It is. I I don't yeah. know why, but my great uncle had it that's in the... his house. I remember seeing it when I went round when I was younger and being like, "That's bottom. the picture that's, from bottom," and no one knew what I was talking about. Anyone who's ever listened to the XFM podcast will know that this, this is the one that so Carl Pilkington said. That? Carl okay. Pilkington said this, uh, in the seventies, loads of people died, mm-hmm. and they all had that picture in the house. Mm-hmm. Is Ricky, that? Yeah, okay. yeah. So. And Ricky Gervais went, "Well, no, that's just a coincidence. It's like saying we're linking it to bins, you know, <laughs> sinks. It's, it's a sinks. That's it. Yeah." Aid Emerson tweeted a picture of um, some supermarket mm. advert which had carrots with smiley faces on. I think it was Aldi, mm. I think. Okay. Aldi, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, look, it's done my idea. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, very funny. 25 years later, they've yes. mixed it. Yeah. <laughs> it was very similar, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. But, but to yeah, be fair, they're, they're Christmas you... character, right? What? That their Christmas character's a carrot. I don't know. With with just a face, with but, just a yeah, smiley face drawn on it. How can you not be similar drawing a smiley face on a carrot? Gonna, you can't make it look any different to that, though, really, but, can you? Yeah. They did nick it. They've nicked it. All right, that's, fine. That's, <laughs> that's what they did. I, now, think, I think Aldi owes yeah. him money. So they, they Richie asked him, well, have you hollowed them out? Made them all sit. Like, can you imagine what hollowing out a carrot would entail? What, what tools would you use? You know what? That's driver. what intrigued me, because yeah. apparently they did used to hollow out turnips. Right. Really? Like, way back when, yeah, before <laughs> pumpkin. Now, do you think Eddie made these carrots explode or did he buy them like this from some dodgy back alley oh I think he's put something in it yeah I th- it, the way he says like the taper yeah. Yeah. I think he's created it like he created the vodka margarine mm. he's probably got quite a good sideline in explosives yeah, the well, fuse is good isn't it it looks yeah, like yeah. carroty it doesn't yeah they develop that idea again in the live show don't they with the semtex and everything you know that Eddie would be like on oh, the dark web had it existed <laughs> then but like he's just it's just black market kind of stuff isn't it that he can get his hands on I think if Richie got his got his fingertips on a computer that was on the dark web he would well he would try and make the most of it in terms of like women and stuff but he would just end up getting con he, Richie would probably end up being trafficked to the to Eastern Europe or something <laughs> almost right. certainly yeah. end up with some sort of like gold digging tie bra or something wouldn't he like yeah, you know absolutely. he would be completely and utterly left yeah. so Sprouts Mexicane having Sprouts left over we've that's been a... building up to Sprouts Mexicane yeah. well that's it's a reference to Holy isn't it, it yes is. yeah. he says left over from Christmas yes. doesn't he yeah. and even so with the joke it's October yeah, yeah. Exactly. So they're well old. Yeah. Doesn't reference which Christmas, which means it very yeah. well could have been Christmas 1992. Yeah. And they've been sitting there festering for three years. <laughs> now, what's it? Our oh, oh, Egon Rone. That, that's a chef, I suppose. He yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. that's the second mention of is. him. Yeah. They do in, I believe, contests. Yeah. yeah. Good enough for Egon Rone. Yeah, yeah. It's the LMT it? conversation. Okay, yeah. it is. There's four different actors that try 
the sprouts in in this show. Yeah, Rick. Rick Mao, Richie, is the best one by far. He, there's some, what he's actually doing... He commits to it, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he's potting yeah. some prop food in his mouth, which yeah. is going to be perfectly palatable. Yeah, but he makes it look yeah. violently horrible, yeah. like choking and like he's got his nostrils flaring up and like make his face goes all red, mm. all stuff. That's all completely manufactured in, in one single shot, no cutting, no editing there. That's yeah. all yeah. him. That is fucking phenomenal mm. and like convulses with his body and, and passes out Rick Mann always does that sort of disgusted look very well doesn't he like we've seen it before when he had the uh, the tea leaves in his mouth you know mm-hmm. it's that sort of horrible revulsion he's always the most theatrical one on stage and on set and in front of a camera isn't he he's always the one who will utilise his face the most utilise his body the most I mean the character he's playing allows him to get away with it Eddie isn't a sort of extrovert Eddie's type character Eddie's more subtle isn't he but Rick is of course the ultimate showman who wants mm. to play up to every member of the the audience whether you're in the front row or right up sure. at the back you the know? cheap seats <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, why are Spud Gun and Dave Hedgehog so punctual bang on seven <laughs> <laughs> they've got nothing else in their yeah. lives I yeah. well maybe so. it's because there is going to be booze yeah booze maybe. and birds oh they look no so pathetic when they open the door as well, oh. don't they? They're proper. Yeah. I fucking love. I've only got eight like, pence. If it's possible, <laughs> only eight pence. Why would you? What? But also, if it's possible to say this about Dave Hedgehog, he looks like he's let himself go yeah. from before, and yeah. he wasn't in a good place before. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he's he's got, look. His tie is too long. You notice when he sits down. <laughs> I didn't notice his tie that. Is, like he's got a jumper on over his shirt right, and tie. Right. And when he sits down, the tie is dangling like below his knees. Oh. But I do, I do love the gag that's like, well, I can't do the maths, but you can only stay for 45 seconds. Yes. Like, yeah. from the eight so that, that's another kind of callback to another house party of those two right. and then being yeah. mistreated, slapped yeah. about. And, and now it's just showcasing again. Why doesn't Richie have any friends? Ah, yeah. Again, I'm, it's just the callback to Holy. It's yeah. just written exactly how Holy plays out, isn't it, really, in terms of they arrive and being there's a an offering of a drink. And then yes. And then another callback, mention of Ethel Cardew. Yes. Mm. Eddie's Who paramour. isn't necessarily a woman what does that mean <laughs> not technically a woman that's such a strange little throwaway maybe, line, isn't it maybe by now she's like been going through a transition in her life you yeah. know i don't know do you remember in uh, new statesman first series there was a a character who was the star's <gasps> assistant yes it was played by a woman and the character starts off as a man and oh, it's yes. slowly becoming a what so it's basically they're taking yeah, off yeah. The beard yes, and it making was very progressive look. yeah it was odd. Oh wait, sorry. Did sorry that was that was always a woman. I thought the that actor, was a man at, at the, the begin actor, with. Really, the actor was a woman with a beard. Yeah, so oh. maybe it's something like a re- like a reverse of that with Ethel yeah. <laughs> Now, why would Eddie have superglued her mouth shut? Oh, that's a silly gag. It's, this is really childish. I don't know. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what is that? Some sort of sex thing? No, could have been a it? sex thing gone but what, wrong. What may- would the sex thing be? Maybe maybe they meant to put super glue in the li- in, 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 in the lip cream jar. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was in the Nivea yeah. jar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just... Super glue. I really hate the pencil tangle gag. I love it. I hate it. I found that and it tickled me. Pen, I'm going to go somewhere tangle. in the middle and say I don't hate it, but yeah. I, don't, right, okay. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not with it. It'll have to be a pencil tangle. Okay. For fuck's sake, come on! Richie decides the party is a write-off instantly, <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, Halloween! Of, I should be able to get at least get a feel up of all nights. Why? Of yeah. all nights? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Why that night and more then, than like, then, New oh, Year's? Who'd be a Christian? What the fuck's that got to do with anything? Oh, it's well, only to then bring up Satan. Well, later. Hall- Halloween is a Christian festival. All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Yes. So it's the day before. It's that's why you're celebrating. It's, it's to celebrate the dead. But there is a lot of fun that is had in this build-up because of the Ladybird Book of Witches that we've like <laughs> yeah, got idea. upstairs. You see it as well, don't you? And you see a, uh, the skeleton from the chess set. Is there? Yeah. There as well. Yeah. And a call back. And I do like the idea that they leap again. The fantasy of right, we're around here. There's no birds. Okay, I'm going to sell my soul to the devil. That seems cartoon level stupid yes. and naive, but, but it's not really that far out of character to, mm. as you say, the the coming of God and like the rain dance, things like that. Him going off on a flight mm. of fancy, really. Yeah. It's, it's very much like him to come up with a plan. It yes. might not be the most sensible plan, but come up with a plan and try and see it through. But I think there's normally... something about it that just isn't sold right. And it, I think yeah. it's the forced, it's that word of forced. All of the build up to yeah. it is just very much you don't really believe that they- Richie would have come up with this in other in series 2 mm. but Eddie would have just told him he's an idiot and we're not doing it and they completely enable him yeah. and just uh, do it there's a bit yeah. when there's all four of them flapping about with the with farting on fire is this a moment like take a step back it seems like a quite a 
cheap silly sitcom when it's yeah. become a bit of a four piece mm. now, this would never not... be the episode I'd show anyone to yeah. say this is my favourite show it's, yeah. When, yeah when Spunk Gun and Dave Hedgehog turn up in series three mm. it does feel like they're trying to make it more of a four hander mm. then you know they don't yeah, feel yeah. like guest stars as much more like yeah. characters in, in yeah they've got a lot of screen time in this episode haven't they they do yeah yeah I especially, mean... well, especially because it's Spunk Gun Mm. separately first yeah. as well it's so got... I suppose conversely like whole last week was just Richie just and Eddie wasn't Hannah, it yeah. so yeah. It, I can see why they would have done this episode so, and I do appreciate the idea behind it so I hate saying that it's like yeah, it's no. not good but it just doesn't play right yeah. it just does not play right somehow something else that feels almost sort of a low low esque is we have the explosion of the conservatory cut back to Dave Hedgehog and he's got the comedy soot face and the mm-hmm. hair standing yeah, yeah. up Bugs Bunny esque isn't That's, it you know, again I know we're going for cartoon but it just yeah. it feel, it just rankles just a little bit although I do like that his next line he's then referencing another callback 3.30 at Chepstone it is mm-hmm. yeah all bets in Hammersmith fake place yeah, at 3.30 yeah. but yeah it's the second time at Chepstone all, although you know, it doesn't occur to him to go oh there's my daughter Oh, I'm not a virgin. What was I worried about? Yeah, I want to bring this up. As a child watching it, it fucking infuriated me that in this episode, well, the line that sets it up, what does the devil drink? Virgin's blood. And then Spunk Gun, Mm. Hedgehog and Eddie all look shifty and nervous. Eddie has never once been referenced to be a virgin at Mm. all, ever, Mm. ever. And this fucking episode, the same episode, Hedgehog has a daughter mm. he knows he's not a virgin that's so stupid you know, it's... unless they're trying to go with it's not that's... actually his daughter like oh, you know be, yeah. like that you, you know, know but it, it, eddie being nervous makes absolutely zero sense yeah. you're right like, Ed... and he's actually like they've, they've teased richie about being a virgin in yeah. the past entertain a possibility with me for one moment imagine if this episode had been rewritten differently the the moment that they all went virgin's blood mm. all three of them Just turned richie. to richie and started laughing and then he shit himself yeah. And then that was the dynamic for it. Seems I, like the I don't know why they didn't. Joke. Yeah. yeah, that would probably feel a bit similar to the Holy episode. It, it just doesn't play as well as yeah. the Holy episode, and yeah. it should do really because it's very similar writing. There's some really great lines in there. Visually quite similar with them. The Natsurrection the... line, mm. I think. What's like that one. It, yeah. It's like we're. You couldn't raise a Natsurrection. Yeah, you couldn't raise a Natsurrection, okay. <laughs> let alone the Prince yeah. of Darkness. There's, and then the dressing gowns that they've got on. And I do love how Rick just calls Spud Gun anus. Yeah. And, and one yeah. bitch. Like, yeah. Calls them cowls, not dressing gowns. Yeah. yeah. Like, That's very reminiscent of Holy, just the image yeah. of them yeah, yeah. in the same yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. With... Yeah. So I don't know if it just doesn't work because, you know, we've seen it before in Holy. And then does the ending feel just very sudden? Absolutely. Oh, no! Oh, you're, you're flying on the exploding thing, bang, yeah. or over with it that weird like... sort of photo, black and white, you know, effect. It's overexposed. Yeah, effect, I think they just, it? it feels like it was a live, they were making it live as and when it happened, yeah. improvising everything, and it's run out of time. And talking of child actors who aren't that good didn't really like Doreen either. I think well, she kind she's of not really child it. in this. No, but, child, but I, I like how bemused and fed up she is. Like she's, she yeah. may have seen Rick mm. before. She's she's at least <laughs> knows of him. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's been loony. sent round to get yeah. him back from there, she, hasn't he? So, she is yeah. playing it with the right sort of bemused attachment. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the actress's name is, but I do Lisa recognize her. Coleman. F- and she was in Casualty, I think. I think and, she was okay. a nurse in Casualty. She's in one episode of Press Gang. Right, hey, and Dexter she was Fletcher. she was the mum, I believe, in Tracy Beaker, but I never oh, watched. Okay, it. I don't know what if anyone ever watches this episode on iTunes. For some reason, the download that I have of yeah, this episode well, on iTunes say, it right? ends with like three minutes left to spare, yeah, yeah, and then it shows the credits again. You, you get you get the um, explosion again. You get a repeat of the opening where Richie extinguishes the food. Then it fades. Then you get the final shot. And all the while, I'm watching them, thinking, "Are these alternative takes?" But they're not. They're the no. exact, exact same. But then you get the the credits dance. But without the credits passing over, yeah. so you get them dancing mm. around, but clean of any text. Yeah, I what don't... the fuck happened there? <laughs> I don't know. a mistake. Yeah, I was really <laughs> expecting like a deleted scene or something. Yeah. You know, so I thought it was. Oh, wait, I've got three minutes left. Why has it ended? Oh, oh, it is. It has ended. And I, get, I think the reason I mentioned violence in this episode is also just the the sheer disgustingness of Eddie's slitting of his wrist. And it's I don't know if it's just I... me being a little bit oversensitive to you... the blood. Like, kind of it wants blood. But... But in Holy, in Holy, yeah. when Richie loses his finger, it's yeah. been an accident, and it's yeah, so yeah. funny the way that's played. Whereas, uh-huh. like Eddie actively slitting yeah, his yeah. own wrist, it's, it's the difference between doing it on purpose and it mm. happening as an accident, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's such a violent act of self harm yeah. to cut your own wrist. It's but, horrible. Yeah. First of all, getting some blood, you're, it's ninety percent proof. Yeah. Another callback. Another... You've already established that you only drinks girl virgin blood, according to you. Mm. So you offering that is odd. It seemed a bit forced. Now. 
why would Eddie go for an artery? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and yeah, as you say, it does look horrific, doesn't it? It's, well, when I he then literally had, yeah. loses consciousness and that gag falls over, kind of saves it. Yeah. But because he's covered in blood, I, I don't know, I've just, again, just a, never found it funny. It's a jet. It's more realistic. A drop of blood is horrific. A bucket of blood mm. is hilarious. Right, okay. Mm. So you is know, it a fake hand that Eddie's got with the thing? I couldn't no, quite no, tell. No, no, no. Right. Something over it? his wrist. He, okay. I, I think he has the pipe coming up underneath sure. his sleeve. And then, because mm. he never quite angles it towards camera enough mm. that we see the actual wrist. Mm-hmm. So It's very well done. Yeah, yeah. It does the effect. But again, I, I think... I'm sure people will be listening thinking, no, you're all wrong. Like, I love that. It was hilarious, but personally like, not. That's not to say there aren't some great lines in this episode and great performances. Mm. There really are. I just think we're moving into the slightly weaker episodes of Bottom with this one. Yeah. Richie always plays over the top nervous excellently. Yes. Him opening the door already terrified, scared, shot just his face uh, and then a bemused bored looking mm. clearly yeah, yeah. human woman yeah <laughs> yeah there and yet it's still terrified <laughs> I, I think very funny yeah. yeah i mean the whole episode's worth it just for trick or ruddy <laughs> yes so good, for, yeah, so good uh, for me uh, for me this whole episode is worth it just for the look on richie's face when eddie's doing the can i drink your juice mm. all that kind of thing yeah the horrified look on rick's face mm. which i think has now become a meme you know you send it to people with the caption uh, the look on your face when someone tells you they don't like bottom going back to break with spud gun and hedgehog's first appearance it was previously established that Hedgehog was a nickname. But in this episode, True. it is confirmed that it's his actual second name because his mm. daughter is called Doreen Hedgehog. His daughter that. calls him Little Dave Hedgehog. <laughs> Have you seen Little Dave Hedgehog? That's what we call him at home. She looks like she's come out of the 80s with that fucking plastic blue coat thing with that horrible colours mm. thing. So she's coming, I guess, from a costume party or something. That's... And also she says, oh, I've been sent round because mum doesn't like it when you're around the loonies past midnight. It's just midnight. It's only just midnight. It's like, yeah. he's not come home yet. You no, be ready no, there. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go and wait outside the, yeah. outside their yeah. door and at the stroke of midnight, yeah. knock on the door to in, shit in them up. In an apocalyptic way. Yeah. yeah. It's such a loud, yeah. echoey, it is good, that odd bit. knock, yeah. isn't it? So <laughs> ominous. So any other particular niggles for you guys? Yes, so I've got a niggle, actually. There's uh, the moment before they all eat the sprouts and pass out. They wake up and it's midnight. Yeah. yeah. But you see on the wall, the clock already says midnight. And Jenny Nichols? What, without saying just basically all <laughs> of it? No, yeah. I feel really negative tonight. I don't know why. I think it's just, I can't pick out a particular thing that really niggles yeah. me with the episode. It's more that I really want to love it. The writing in parts is great, but it just doesn't play right. My main niggle is when he holds up the frying pan and there's a burnt sausage on it, mm. they're both black, so you can't see the sausage. So the, so the joke is diminished. It's a charred mess, essentially, yeah. in there. But yeah, black on black. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking at... So to be honest, you have to struggle to see the sausage yeah. and not realise that it's, he's just holding up an empty frying pan. But you're right, yeah, because when they cremate the bird, it's surrounded by tinfoil, yeah. so you can see yes. the cremated you bird, yeah. yeah. Do you think there are people that will watch bottom Halloween episode on Halloween yeah yeah, I think so absolutely yeah Yeah. there will be loads of people that do I think the costumes from this are one of the most enduring things that you can take from this particular episode now Mm. you see a lot of people and as you said earlier we're just dressing up as Richie and Eddie is kind of you can do Mm. that you know they're normal stuff but that's kind of a bit just wearing normal clothes but these costumes are things that people can take yeah and also these are I've seen a lot of women going out dressed like this seen a picture of Two women dressed as Richie and Eddie. Yeah. Fucking hot. Yeah, they looked amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. There's plenty that go around every year, I think. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and in that way, I like this episode because it means you're part of the club. Yeah. So if you yeah. get what those outfits are, yeah. and if you're going to a Halloween party and you're going to dress as that, and then yeah. people are going to sure. ask, and then they'll talk about it, and be like, oh, that's from Bottom, that it's, brilliant it's, sitcom from the 90s. Do you not know, dick? Those costumes are something that if you just saw like the sort of silhouette outline yeah. of mm. this, you'd know exactly what it was from. There are you? some pop art images yeah. of that somewhere as well that I've seen. Okay, I think it's time for a quiz, isn't it? So this week's questions are by me. Ten questions all about the episode. This or episode maybe all not. about this episode, yeah? Definitely. Specifically this episode. So there's nothing that's like an arduous, silly link or anything. How far so. away... <laughs> no, uh, everything is pretty much linked to this episode. So Pretty I... much. Yeah, so it's so best of ten, uh, and we are using our standard fart buzzers. Matt, let's hear your fart, please. There you go. Ange, let's hear your arse. 
Oh, I really like that. Much. No, that's great. We should have some Sprouts Mexican <laughs> yeah, themed yeah. buzzes. No, you would then burn my flat down. <laughs> yeah. As ever, I will keep an eye out for who pressed the button first. Okay, question number one. What is the main headline on the front of the newspaper that they're reading? I think Matt pipped it there. Okay, well, um, I, I don't know because I'm thinking of the second time you see him reading the newspaper where it says 33 to 1. Uh. That's not the answer, is it? No, that, no. no, no that's the answer to a, to a bonus question that's now going in the bin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's something along the lines of Halloween chaos to start tonight, but I don't think that's the exact wording. Uh, you know what? I don't think I can give you that. So the exact quote is, hospitals gear up for mm. Halloween bonanza. <laughs> that's it, yeah. So there's a clue there straight away that's Halloween. Yeah. Then they miss. That's true, actually. It's yeah. right there on screen from the start, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's there from the title as yeah. well, so we should know it's Halloween. Okay, I hope so... that that would be the headline in the Hammersmith yeah, Bugle yeah. as well. <laughs> <Ready> <laughs> that's for, how much they love. Chaos. That's how much they love Halloween right yeah. there. Question number two. On what page is the Spot the Ball competition? Matt, that's you. 23. Is not the right answer. Angela? 26. Oh, you see, you never see it, but they do reference it. It's 13. Oh. Okay, how do they reference it? He goes, oh, lucky 13. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. So that's zero each. Question number three. What brand of beer does Eddie drink a can of? That's Angela. Heineken. Is the right answer. I think Heineken must be a favourite. You do see a few cans dotted mm, around the place. You do uh, in this episode. As yeah. well as a this very prominently placed tin of beans. Yeah, there's beans and there's sure. two burnt bits of toast. Are you sure it's Heineken? The one that he's drinking with Spunk Gun you're talking about? When he sits down as the banana, he cracks open a can. All right, okay, because when he's with Bug Gun, it's like special brew or something. It's yeah, something different. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so that's one point to Ange. What are the three colours of tights that Richie gets through? I think Matt pips that one, sorry. In order? Yeah, uh, you, you can do the red, in order. Yep. green, transparent. I'll take transparent. It's kind of beigey, kind of. I mean, they're pretty. Yeah, kind of like tan. Though, I would say, but no go on. I'll it's take a tight color. They yeah. don't mention <laughs> the color, do they? Yeah. It's yeah. Just... Okay, that's uh, that's one each. Mm -hmm. Question number five. Out on the street, on the wall, there are posters for the Jesus and Mary Chain album. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Maximum Carnage. I'm afraid that's not the right <laughs> no, answer. That. Don't know. But I can only remember that it's happiness for the for the other poster. Gonna annoy me. Uh, I can't remember. The answer is sometimes, always. Okay, so there's no points for that. What was it? The Jesus. What? Uh, Jesus and so Mary Train. The Jesus and Mary Train. What is that? It's yeah. a band. It's a band. Okay. Yeah. Is it a Christian rock band or? No, no, no oh. they're they're pretty hardcore, I think, aren't they? I don't know. Just an ironic title, really. Sure. Uh, Stuart Lee likes them. If you didn't like that question, you're not gonna like the next one because it's related to the same thing. Underneath the <laughs> underneath the album's name, what is the release date listed on the poster? Oh, fuck off. Oh, fucking hell! I'm... So are we? Go on. Um, a date in the future. In the past. Can I ask, are you looking for, a, I mean, I'm not going to guess it, but like, are you asking for like the, the first date of the month and then the month and the year or? The not month, the, the month and the year. Not the year. Okay. Oh. The number of the, the number within the month and, and the month Halloween. itself. So oh. I'm just going to say 29th of November. It's not the right answer, Matt. I'm going to go the 1st of December. Okay. It's not the right answer. It's actually the 18th of July. Oh. So close. Okay. Why the fuck would they be advertising that fuck in October? No, it might have been an old one, though. It probably <laughs> yeah, is an old yeah, one, right? Yeah. It's still... Right, okay. Updated. Okay, so we're still on one apiece, and it's question number seven. You wouldn't believe how many things I wrote down off those posters. <laughs> yeah. Not that. Yeah. Okay. Spot Gun lives at Chief Mangasuta Butelezi Kodisak. How many letters are there in Chief Mangasuta Butelezi? Oh, for God's sake. Matt. Nine. Uh, that's incorrect. Angela, I'm going to have to take an answer from you now. 18. It's actually 24. I'm not going to give anyone any points there, sorry. Okay. What is Spud Gun's house number? Matt? Nine. Correct! That's the right answer. That's two points for Matt. Okay. What am I on? You're on oh, one. It's 2-1 I mean, at the moment. That's odd. I shut my eyes and just pulled <laughs> it out of my subconscious. That okay. was weird. All right. Okay, question number nine. For how long has the homebrew been on the go for? That's Matt. Three hours. Is oh, incorrect. Can I both? Ange? 45 minutes? Is the right answer. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. two apiece, and we're on question 10. The guys list some evil things they could do for the devil. What are the three things that they list that they could do? That's Matt. Picking your nose, swearing, then another third one. Do you know, Ange? I can't Dude, say that it's coming back to me. Different. That's actually, sorry, I'm talking I'm talking about when uh, Spud Gun and Hedgehog are there. Oh, so, what, to conjure so, them up? So, so, no, so, no, no, so, when the devil's there. So, so best behaviour, no, worst behaviour. No, no, right. Spud Gun lists one, Eddie lists one, and Dave Hedgehog lists one. Farting in a phone box and running away. That's one. Uh, that 
Okay. I can't remember, honestly. Okay, well, the other two are watching Emmerdale and taking him down the pub. Oh, yes. Here is your bonus question to decide the quiz. When Dave Hedgehog breaks down and starts singing All Things Bright and Beautiful, what colour is the towel wrapped around his head? <laughs> Matt. Burgundy? Burgundy. No, it's not burgundy. Brown? No, no, it's not. Okay, so you're both wrong. It's basically white. <laughs> He's got a burgundy dressing gown on. Fuck it, hell. Here is your here is your next fucking tiebreaker question. This episode went out in January 1995. What day? What date in January 1995? Angela. Thirteenth. Fuck it, hell. That's the right answer. (laughs) Okay, so Angela. I'm so surprised. It was a question about bottom. So well done, Angela. That's three to two. You win this week's quiz. So next week it's break. Break, which is my least favorite episode. Ah, and I'm quizzing? Yeah. In the meantime, of course, if you want to get in contact with us, we're at 11 Parade at gmail.com and our social media on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook is at Talking Bottom. And uh, if you completely disagree with us and love this episode, please email in or, or message in, whatever. Yeah. Tell, tell us what, what you like about it, what, what makes this episode stand out for you. You know, it's, uh, it's personal tastes with everything, it's sort of comedy, you know? Like, yes. It's objective. Mrs. Brown's boys is objectively shit, <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, this is a different thing. And if you know who the female is on the cardboard cutout that gets held yeah. up aloft during the fight, then yeah, do please let us know. I want I want actual proof though. I want like a picture yeah, of who the celebrity yeah. was. It looks like Madonna or like what a supermodel or and something. And I have to watch it again. I thought it was like a Wiener Curry or something. Okay, God. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for the uh, series free roundup. I suppose. In the meantime, thanks for listening. And please, uh, if you can find the time, give us a review on iTunes or whatever place you download the podcast. Give us a little review, please, because it just really, really helps us. And, you know, a couple of words, you're great. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, be brilliant. It really, it, genuinely, for some reason, it really helps uh, with figures and it being shared and stuff. I don't know why. Thanks for listening, everyone. See you next week. Happy Bye-bye. Halloween.